Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you in part by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up to date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And good afternoon. Welcome into Market Talk for this Monday, August 9th. Great to have you here with us once again. I'm your host, Jesse Allen. Thanks for joining us. MarketTalkAg.com. That is our home on the web. MarketTalkAg.com is where you can find us. Also, find our social media links there. All of our streaming sources, everything online. MarketTalkAg.com. We got a Monday that's uh, fairly mixed, we'll call it, to mostly lower. Kind of an interesting day today here as we're a few days away from that August WASD report. Let's bring in Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing to join us here today. And Brian, good afternoon to you, sir. And um, just a very interesting day all around here. And I made the comment to you before we jumped on. It just seems like the trade is kind of kind of just waiting for Thursday's report at this point. Yeah, you sure get the, kind of the feel of that today. It's just kind of ho-hum. I pointed out last week uh, that now that we're in August, we're now in our fifth month trading December corn futures at 550. Where are we today? Down two and three quarters, 553 and three quarters. Last week, I think we picked up as either seven or 11, I think 11 cents on the week. Give a little bit of that back today. Good rains in parts of the Midwest. Then again, others who missed. Uh, got some real heat on tap. I'm not sure how that's going to affect some of the crop. Wheat prices down today. Got the dollar up a little bit. You had beans on both sides of steady and finished that way with August up 11, November down 7. Just trying to figure it out. Average trade guess, though, um, for next week when we look at, at corn, right at about 15 billion bushels, 177.6 bushels an acre. And that would be down about two bushels an acre from the from the baseline number that the USDA used. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're preparing for this report, and obviously we're going to get some more private estimates out here this week and and everything else. But just the, the general feeling that I'm getting from the market is that the market's ready to break one way or another. We've kind of been range-bound in corn and beans here lately. It just feels like the market is primed and ready to break. We just don't know what way it's going to break. Yeah, and, and that's just the, the challenge of it right now because even like myself, people in our position here and we look at this and we sort of make the ledger sheet of all the bulls and bear arguments in the in the marketplace, boy, they're about split right now. And uh, it's, you know, if your viewers uh, or listeners are, are, you know, feeling that way, it's not unusual. On the one hand, you've got some incredibly tight carry out, a big drawdown from a year ago, uncertainty to this crop. On the other hand, prices have rallied, and you've got 550 corn. You don't have 350 corn. You've got 550 corn. End-user buying seems to be slowing. Export inspections today, uh, again, showed probably some slowdown there as well. Maybe it's a supply availability. We'll see some of that corn maybe sold for this marketing year, also inspected after the September 1st uh, when the new marketing year begins. So it's kind of waiting and waiting and waiting to see what this weather does here in August. Last August, it was bullish for the market. We'll see what, what this looks like. But nine days in, areas that are really dry that haven't got rain, they're not going to get helped a whole lot anymore. Rain could be certainly helpful for a lot of that corn we argued is in that fair category. Might slip it into the good category, and before you know it, we do a little better than we expect. But, yeah, certainly range-bound, a tight technical formation on the charts. Uh, manage money went a little bit longer, at least that as of last Tuesday. Um, they were 264,000 contracts. So they're kind of positioned long. They were, they're not 400,000, Jesse, but they certainly could be a lot less. So, you know, my concern as a producer would be that um, things break to the downsides. So I'd be, I'd be, you know, inclined to on August 9th, really starting to look at how to defend these prices. And that's, you led me right to what my next question was going to be, Brian, you know, looking at defending some of these prices and even looking out into 22. I mean, some of the prices out there for, for that crop, it would seem like, it would make a lot of sense to try and, and lock in some of that price premium and defend it now because, I mean, you look out at some of those numbers, looking at the 22 crop even, 
uh, we have some really solid numbers there that just, to me, it makes sense to try and defend that right now. Yeah, we're right there. Well, let, let's 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 kind of make the argument why it makes sense because the last time prices kind of let's say got hit or mm -hmm. fell apart was after the Fourth of July weekend, and the uh, on the sixth of July we saw that D twenty two corn contract trade as low as four sixty three and a half. Today we're at five nineteen and a half. So let's just round and say five twenty. 460, 520. So it's a close to a 60 cent rally in the corn. That's a big percentage of the value of the contract. Um, the contract high was was uh, a spike, which means it just kind of came and went really fast back on May 7th. Well, usually you got old crop from 2020 on May 7th on hand. You got 20 crop to worry, 21 crop to worry about. So if you didn't make any sales in 22, it's not, you know, that would be you know, more expected than not. Now we fast forward four months. It's certainly time to be thinking about, you know, getting some sales in place for next year because we are right there, uh, close to that contract high. Beans, maybe, you know, 1253, you might be patient, see if we couldn't get a little bit better out of that. Um, the contract high there is a little over 13. Looks like that may have a little bit favorable tone. The new crop isn't moving up as fast as it is the corn. Looks like corn's really trying to fight for some acres right now for some reason or another. Um, but 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 even that, it, you know, a 10, 20% sale there, if that's your first and it's your worst, I think you'll be happy with it. I like that. If that's your first and it's your worst, I think you'd be happy with it. That, that's that's a great way to look at it, Brian. Um, looking at the wheat numbers today, I know you touched on that a little bit. We were down a little bit in wheat today. We obviously already know the crop losses we're seeing with spring wheat and some of the challenges in, in Europe, um, but it just seemed like maybe just the pressure, spillover pressure from corn and, and some of that bean complex today kind of impacting wheat. He had the dollar a little bit higher as well, and, and that, and, and wheat's had a good rally here, and it had a less than, you know, ideal signal last week, where in, um, on the 4th it posted what we term a bearish key reversal at the top of a rally. So, that just means it took out the previous day's high and low and closed lower than the previous day. It's one of those signals that, you know, can mean a lot. So, so far the market hasn't gathered enough momentum to take that high out from last week. If it does, it somewhat negates that. Um, so at best, I'd say we're consolidating. The world certainly isn't ready to run out of wheat. On the other hand, it the supply is shrinking. You've got issues in downgrades to crop in Russia, Ukraine, probably parts of Europe, certainly Canada, our spring wheat crop here at home. Um, it is it is a tighter environment than a year ago, and the charts have really performed well here the last month, but also should be rewarded. Very, very true. Brian, uh, looking over here as well at this grain complex in, in general, and you know, I think the one bright spot, we saw meal today higher and I know there's some concerns about uh, in Argentina with the Parana rivers at very low levels. And so some of those factors you look at uh, in other parts of the world, plus I know the cheap price of, of soybeans at the Gulf. I know that, that's got to be another thing to watch as well. And obviously that export sale this morning, too. So it seems like there's some good momentum uh, in the soybean complex with some of those other factors weighing in. Well, there is. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. Well, ahead. well, let's go over this. August beans eleven higher today, but new crop November seven. So one reflects a little bit more rain. One reflects the tight inventory and export sales for delivery, probably as quick as you can get it into the pipeline. Um, and so you had sort of a, a dichotomy today, and unfortunately, November just can't seem to hold the rallies uh, with a high of thirteen forty seven and a quarter. So trying to hang around that thirteen fifty, but struggling. Uh, but you're right. What you talk about in Argentina, there are some very low water patterns in the river, so so that's it's tough to get the the the. Uh, my understanding is the boats down river and get them to the port where they load on ships. So have to load them lighter or figure it out differently. Um, you've got a really tight soybean number, but we haven't seen exports or inspections lately that have been really enticing. Nor the um, crush, which again tells us that. End users are, there's, it's not like demand is not there. It's just taking a different form. They don't want to pay the high price, seeing if they can hold it out to harvest, maybe get some lower levels. I don't think, though, for some time, um, northern hemisphere crops, they're not going to be big enough and robust enough to really support the overall 
demand market. And part of the wet rag hanging over the markets that we really mentioned today, again, it's just kind of this whole COVID thing. And again, that uncertainty. And this morning, one of the first articles I read was, you know, concern that China's economy will slow and won't keep up it to the pace it was. And there's that type of just negativity out there that just kind of holds prices in check. Definitely. Very, very true. Let's talk livestock here today, Brian. Uh, this hog complex, kind of a head scratcher. I think a lot of folks were expecting it to be you know, at least steady to hire here to start the week. And boy, were they wrong. Limit down in some of those contracts. Uh, what do you make of what we saw in hogs yeah. today? Well, steady on the August, so that that we know. <laughs> yeah. uh, 15 higher, 108.90, but all the back months beyond that, especially October down limit, 84.60. Uh, again, I mentioned China. It seems like the only real news we could find today to sort of relate to something was this idea that China's internal hog prices are on the decline, both to, to, to COVID concerns and then, you, you know, we keep hearing this and uh, – seen a little more of it that but just bigger bigger herd numbers in china and heavier hogs these big hogs these monster hogs that they market that are basically twice the weight is it was like like a little like a small sow or maybe a big sow going to market so so you've got the meat out there uh you know starting to build worldwide so that that's putting the pressure on hogs. If you've been a bull on hogs, you had kind of a really nice correction here, but last week's drop under the 100 day and then poor close on Friday, follow through today, just not looking healthy in that that chart right now. And, and, you know, looking as well with China and some of their concerns over there, and I know that's another weight on this hog market that, uh, you know, we're starting to get some travel restrictions in Asia and, and China, and that's going to be Another concern as well, and plus you just think about you know moving forward with some of the uh, seasonal tightening of uh, of that supply as well. I think um, I'm very curious to see how hogs can fare here the rest of this week. Where do we go tomorrow? Where do we go Thursday with uh, WASD and and various reports and everything else? I, I'm curious to see if this is a one day thing in hogs, or if we can or if we continue to see this downward momentum. Yeah, I, we are too. I, it looks to me like we're trading today at the same prices that we were right at a month ago. In the meantime, though, you had a nice rally and then you've fallen off again. And so you can look at it a couple of ways and say, well, we're trading at the same price we were a month ago. And actually the same price we were back in April. And then we've had some rallies in between. Um, or you could look at it and say, you know, we're holding overall pretty well. And you're going to have down days, but the demand for pork is there and that we're going to see this robust demand hold. I, I just can't bring myself to get into that camp right now because of, of high prices, cure high prices mentality. I, I'm going to stick in that camp that from a supply side situation, we're going to increase the supply and the market is reflecting that today. On the cattle side, we tried to trade higher, but just uh, not a lot of momentum to trade higher. It couldn't hold it and you know, lack of leverage uh, with the ongoing packer constraints and everything else. What are your thoughts on this cattle market today, Brian? Yeah, you know, we saw a little rally early on. It looked pretty good, and then then we just didn't hold it. And the market was down 25 to 45, so it wasn't a disaster. But, again, it's kind of one of those momentum things. We just don't have the mo upward momentum right now. And so I think cattle have to struggle with that, and I think that's – from my analysis, it's just a, uh, my best guess, I guess I should say, um, is this whole kind of concern with this demand with COVID. Where, where is this going to head? Um, you know, we got fairs and everything going on. You look out and you, gosh, you go, well, what COVID? But, you know, when you watch the news, it's very concerning. It's spiking hard. What does this mean for packing plants? I we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't. Last time around, everything was new. Hopefully, it doesn't mean much, but I think the market, it just feels very guarded right now. Just when it looks strong, it it fades. And that's that's uh, that's usually a sign of uncertainty in a marketplace where the bulls are there, but they don't get the the emotional bull, the guy that's bought, and says, I'm going to buy more. Yeah, or we're going to, the trend looks up, we, we're targeting another $5 higher. We're just not seeing that kind of language. Yeah. And that's, I think, another thing, too, we're just going to have to watch closely moving forward and see. I know there's a lot of things going on in D.C. as well and trying to get some momentum and some changes for 
for Packers continuing here and some of the constraints there and everything else. So I'm really curious just with, with all of the underlying and outside factors into this livestock market, how we, how we get through the next couple of months and get through the rest of the year. It just seems like there's going to be a lot of news headlines, storylines to watch, Brian. Yeah, th- there is. I, the markets are always dynamic. That means they're always in flux. They're always moving. Sometimes the volatility is really high. Sometimes they're really low. You know, they're they're they're, they're quieting down some. Now, what we haven't seen is uh, yet in the meats or in the grains. We haven't seen the exchanges reduce the margin requirements yet. So, they yeah, they're kind of just. It isn't on their calendar yet. I don't know if they have a certain day they check this. But it sure seems to me like when you look at corn, you've got a lot of money required per contract. And let's just say it's about 2,400. Um, you know, it's usually around 800 to 1,000 or 1,200. So it's a solid two times what it normally is. I get, granted, prices are higher. But let's go back to what I said earlier. This is our fifth month in a row with the market either side of 550. It really isn't moving a whole lot. So so one of the functions of the marketplace could be when you slow down your volatility is you reduce the margin requirements. That is the exchange, the good faith money on a futures contract. And that can create more participation. So right now, I just don't think you've got a lot of people who like the margins that are willing to add a lot of positions on rallies are kind of hopeful to see what weather brings. But they're not ready to buy five seventy-five corn, thinking it's going to six twenty-five or seven dollars. Definitely, outside or well, I'll go to dairy first. Uh, we we'll get an update there. What's the dairy market looking like on this Monday? Uh, you, you know, overall, I it, it's hard to get too excited. I mean, it had some gains today. They were minimal. Um, it, well, too lower to uh, seventeen higher in the December contract. There's two ways to look at the milk. Uh, pretty solid close today. It looks like it's trying to consolidate. Um, I don't think there's too many of us who would argue that, geez, you know, we should have milk at $20. The numbers have gotten bigger. The supply numbers are bigger. Uh, we may got a little help from World tra- Dairy Trade here this last week, but very little. The, the big picture perspective is just still too much supply. The supportive numbers, though, are the feed cost. It's expensive to feed livestock. It's expensive to feed cattle right now. So, you know, we're thinking that that acts as a limiting factor. But you got 17s in front of all of these contracts with the exception of August, and you're close to 18. If you haven't done any marketing, get some marketing done. We'll go back to what we said early on. If this is your first, hope it's your worst. But if we get rallies, I think you've got to look at that as a real opportunity to sell. This COVID thing scares us a little bit more so. Probably what scares us is just that the world probably isn't ready to pour in the $20 milk right now. We, we, we've got good exports. We've got good things. But we've got supplies that are going to get heavier, it looks like. And outside markets, you mentioned the dollar today uh, providing some weakness to the commodity sector overall. I know crude oil down the Dow Jones a little bit lower today. What are you seeing in the outside markets? Anything there of note? Yeah, well, I think I've noticed is the energy markets, the crude. Um, crude dial down to two and a half dollars or so today. It seems to kind of run out of gas in that seventy, seventy-five dollar area. Um, I, I don't think that's a surprise. We've kind of, you know, took a look at this and it everything all the arrows seem to point toward 55 60 dollars a barrel you probably start making some money and you start bringing more more wells online the covid concerns the marketplace there was a report out this morning released uh the united nations and painted kind of a uh, eye-opening view of global warming and uh, climate change and things that um you know, seem to be pointing a finger. You always got to watch for the author, but who pointing a finger at you know carbon emissions and man-made use of energies, fossil fuels. So, mm-hmm. so it's kind of nothing new, but it's more confirmation of what those who are kind of pro alternative fuels. It's 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 kind of the news they want to hear. They want to get that agenda out there. And believe that. Um, you know, these necessities will create innovation. So more solar, maybe better conversion rates, what have you. But um, but the outside markets are also reflecting, you know, the core of the Midwest got a heck of a corn crop, heck of a bean crop coming. But you get out west, they got a heck of a lot of forest fires and some real problems. So uh, and Europe's dry and it's hot. And 
you're seeing other parts of the world run into some of this effects of if you call it climate change or just whatever a drought year um so it keeps the wheat market alive keeps that buoyant right now especially uh we talked about kind of the, the middle east uh, north uh, russia ukraine that area black sea wheat punched in new highs last week um so a lot of dynamics for sure going on i think underlying all of that is you know some optimism that the u.s economy will hold together strong if the Congress can come together on a on a bill to uh, create infrastructure. Um, so, without rambling on too much here, you've got the you've got the uh, stock market hanging right around thirty five thousand on the Dow, pretty solid yet. Definitely. Well, Brian, I know of course uh, anyone needs any advice. It's going to be a big week here. Got big reports on Thursday. They can reach out to you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing to uh, get a little bit of that advice, can't they? They can. Uh, just give us a call at 800-334-9779. Uh, ask for Brian uh, Doherty or anybody on his team. Uh, they're all well-versed veterans, licensed. Um, they can, they can, they're, they're in the trench, as I say it. They're in the ditch working hard and they, they know what's in that ditch. Definitely. And I know you can find out info as well, totalfarmmarketing.com. Brian, appreciate the time as always, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Jesse, thank you. Great to do the show again. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing, our guest today here on Market Talk. Find us online, markettalkag.com. This has been the Monday, August 9th edition of the show. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.